with you. That will help them to become preserved in the church. Conserved in the church. Confirmed in the faith. Then consistent and then committed members of the church. Follow-up is an important aspect of the Great Commission. It's a vital process in the establishment of the converts in the church and in the expansion of the kingdom of God. And if we are going to do this effectively, hey, there are some things that follow-up will demand. Number one, it will demand conversion. What does that mean? The conversion of the people that are doing the follow-up themselves. Because, uh, you know, we shouldn't take for granted that everybody that claims to actually be a part of the church is converted. Now these converts are believed, and we want to follow up on them. If we're going to follow up effectively on them, the people that get involved in the follow-up must have Christ-like, Christian conduct and character. Number three, communion with Christ. If we're going to do the follow-up effectively, and there is something the Lord is expecting from you, from me, we should be people who are prayerful. And we're in communion, constant communion, with the Lord Jesus Christ. How can the withered or withering branch be able to produce fruit? How can we send a dry church member, a weary church member, and a withered church member, a church member that does not have the life of the vine and the life of Christ within him is cut off? It's backsliding. It's withered. How can we tell him to go and follow up another individual? Number four, there'll be concern. Concern. There are people that are rejoicing in their newfound faith. And they have gone back home. And as they have gone back home, you'll be wondering what's happening to them now. You are concerned about them. It is that concern that actually makes you move on and pursue the growth of those people that need to grow in the Lord. Number five, compassion. As uh, we uh, get around uh, this uh, follow-up, what we need is real compassion. And it is the compassion that makes you pick up your Bible. Get out of your house. Get out of your comfort zone. And go to those uh, converts and see how they are doing. Number six is consecration consecration if we're going to do the follow-up and do it effectively we need consecration as well Number seven consistency if we're going to actually help these uh, young people these uh, new converts we need to be consistent about it just going once uh, that's not enough have you been converted for so long you don't remember that when a new convert is has come to the lord uh, there are some doubts, there are some questions, and uh, there are some misgivings. A lot of questions will be in their hearts. The joy I have now, will it continue ever? Or will there be ups and downs? I'm facing persecution already. It's not even one week or two weeks since I gave my life to the Lord. They're putting the pressure on me. If the pressure continues like this, will I be able to stand? Will I be able to make it at last? A lot of questions in their minds. And the reason why we do follow up is reach them immediately. Get to them immediately. Touch their lives immediately. And see how to resolve those doubts. We're doing the follow up because of, number one, assurance of salvation assurance of salvation number two because of affection for the savior and we want them to get uh, to get real love affection for the savior number three affiliation with the church we want them to be affiliated with the church so that by the grace of god the fellowship of the church cement of love the glue of love in the church will be able to tie them and glue them and pin them down they'll be grounded in the love of god number four assimilation of the scripture and they need not to be reading the scriptures assimilating the scriptures taking the scriptures in number five association with saints association with the people that by the grace of god they are passed through those initial stage of the christian life and the Lord has not made them steady. And they are saints in the Lord. And they need association with the saints in the church so that they can be well grounded in the watch of the Lord and in this experience that they have got. Number six, avoidance of past sins. We need to get them quickly. And we need to get to them very quickly and tell them I, that they need to avoid all the past sins because if they go back to them, the latter end will be worse than the beginning. Then, number seven, alienation from sinners. We need to tell them, come out from among them. He separates, says the Lord. 
we need to tell them alienation from sinners. Number eight, activity is so winning that even now, as they have just come to know the Lord, it's when they should reach out and begin to also win souls to the Lord as well. Number nine, attachment to the shepherd. Attachment to the shepherd. And that's what we're doing in follow-up. Well, when we go to do follow-up, it's not just a, you know, random thing or just rambling or just talking or whatever. We're doing something very, very definite. If we do this thing as the Lord wants us to do, uh, this thing, is there any reward? Oh, yes, a great, great reward. The Lord will reward every one of us in Jesus' name. In John chapter 4, John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 34. John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look unto the, look on the fields, for they are ready, they are white or ready to harvest. And he that trippeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. I pray that you will rejoice as God continues to reward you in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless the work of your hand. While you are concerned for these new converts, and you are reaching out to them and touching their lives, the Lord will be reaching out to you. As we take care of the things that belong to the Lord, the Lord will take care of things belonging to you also. Let's rise up and commit ourselves to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, we're going to do what you want us to do. We have just received a charge from General Superintendent on the follow-up to still convert. In Acts chapter 15, verse 36, and some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Brethren, we need to lift our voice unto the Lord and pray that the Lord will grant every convert grace to love the Lord and his word unconditionally. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord that the fruit of this crusade both the online and the physical people on the ground, they will love the Lord and they will serve God unconditionally. Pray that they will continue steadfast in the faith and in the doctrine of Christ and the fellowship in the church. Ask the Lord and pray that they will have strong desire for the sincere milk of the world and experience rapid spiritual growth in their life as a young believer. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 23 says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock and look well to thy head. We want to pray that God will make you and all, all workers and members of the body of Christ, diligent, dedicated, committed, and devoted to the spiritual growth of these converts, that will do all within us to ensure that they are grounded and rooted in the Word of God. Pray that God will grant them, I mean this convert, will empower them to resist every temptation and overcome every temptation from the devil. They will not compromise their faith. They will stand steadfast to the end. I believe you are praying Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of you, of faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks to for you, making mention of you in my prayers. We want to pray that all of us together will be committed to committing these converts to the Lord in prayer, in our family devotion, in our individual, personal, devotional life, as well as in all the programs in the church. We commit this convert to the Lord, that the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, will grant unto them wisdom and knowledge in, this, in the knowledge of Him 
that their eyes of the understanding may be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of his calling and what riches of the glory of his inheritance that is in the saints. Let's pray that God will help them that their understanding will be enlightened and that God will give them wisdom and understanding as they study the word of God. Let's pray. Every member of the church, especially every worker, that all of us will have the heart of a shepherd to follow up and nurture up all the converts given to us. That none of the slips or the data of the convert will be lost by carelessness, but will be faithful to keeping and preserving those converts in the faith. Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We want to pray that all these converts, the Lord will help us to be able to teach them individually and bring them to the knowledge of the word of God. Pray that God will grant them, I mean convert, we empower them to resist every temptation and overcome every temptation from the devil. They will not compromise their faith. They will stand steadfast to the end. I believe you are praying Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of you, of faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. I want to pray that all of us together will be committed to committing this convert to the Lord in prayer, in our family devotion, in our individual, personal, devotional life, as well as in all our programs in the church, we commit this convert to the Lord, that the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, will grant unto them wisdom and knowledge in, this, in the knowledge of him, that their eyes of the understanding may be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of his calling, and what riches of the glory of his inheritance that is in the saints. Let's pray that God will help them that their understanding will be enlightened. And the God will give them wisdom and understanding as they study the word of God. Pray that every member will be willing to spend and be spent, that the Lord will grant every member of the church and workers as well to be committed to ensuring the spiritual stability and continuity of all these converts. Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We want to pray that all these converts, the Lord will help us to be able to teach them individually and bring them to the knowledge of the word of God. Let's finally pray that God will make every one of us to be committed to the spiritual upliftment and sustenance of this convert. Let us pray. Father, we thank you very much for what you have been able to help us to do today. We pray that this convert of this crusade, they will not be lost. It will help us to search for them, follow them up, keep them, preserve them, and eventually they become disciples of Christ in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.